I know, thanks for joining us. Um, that's a really good presentation. So we have questions are coming in, so we'll get started. Uh, Katie, she's tearing her MCL. What should she be doing to get back on the rugby pitch as soon as possible? And um, she's been out for a year now and hopes to get back soon. Yeah, absolutely. So with our MCL, we want to make sure that the, the quadricep and hamstring muscles are as strong as possible after the injury. Um, often we'll see some wastage away of those muscles and we can see some weakness after the injury. So it's really important that you get those back to full strength after the injury, but also looking at the hip strength. So with the medial collateral ligament on the inside of the knee, we've got to make sure the hip strength is really as strong as it can be to try and prevent that inwards motion of the knee that causes um, some of that strain to go onto the MCL. So if the legs are equally as strong as each other, so um, the non-injured side is equally strong as the injured side and the hip strength is equally strong, then that's probably our markers to head back onto the pitch as well. Um, but she has to make sure that we're strong in the quadriceps and the hamstrings to really help protect that MCL going forward. And after a year, um, there shouldn't be any real contraindications on the MCL. Um, again, I presume that's you know, seeing uh, potentially a surgeon or the sports physician but otherwise just making sure the muscles are as strong as possible um, would be the best guidance. Great. Uh, Christina says, is trampolining a good exercise? Yeah, it's great to keep up the heart rate. Um, trampolining is a fantastic exercise for, for that side of things, for sure. It can also help with lower limb strength. Um, so there is some evidence there as well. It wouldn't be the only exercise I would do, but absolutely you could use that to increase the heart rate and to strengthen the lower limb. You may still want to add a few more exercises on but I think it's a fantastic exercise and a lot of people find it's great fun. Okay, good, good. Uh, Tom's saying, is there any exercise which will get rid of a severe limp after uh, a hip replacement? Otherwise, yeah, so he, said he, has, he has good function in the hip for just a bit of a limp. Yeah, often if we have good range of motion, but we don't necessarily have the full strength back in the hip, that's when we'll see the limp kind of occur. So making sure that the side of the hip muscles are really strong because they're the ones that uh, are often cut through. So you want to make sure the side of the hip muscles are, are really strong to provide stability to that hip so that you can prevent that limb. Also making sure that you do some gait re-education training. So our physios at the clinic will do a lot to make sure your gait cycle is back to normal. You, uh, often the, the limp can be a, a learnt pattern. So it's making sure that we, we train that gait pattern. And so we often focus on picking the knees up, making sure you almost do like a mini marching pattern to retrain the gait. So the muscles need to be strong first because no amount of gait retraining will retrain the muscles to the, if they're not strong. But yeah. then afterwards we can do some gait retraining where we focus on lifting the knees up a little bit higher to try and prevent that limp. Good, thank you. Uh, I have two questions now that uh, came from the rotation, uh, from Ruth's talk on shoulders. Uh, Gay Nolan, what exercise would you recommend for a rotator cuff injury? Mm -hmm. And I think also there was another one there about rotator cuff. He'd had surgery and rotator cuff, but having similar symptoms and wondering what exercises could he do other than having surgery. Absolutely. So for both with the rotator cuff, it kind of activates in any of our shoulder strengthening exercises. So any kind of pressing movement overhead, especially, will um, make sure the rotator cuff's doing some work. If we're limited in terms of range of motion, then that's where we might use some of our banded rotator cuff exercises. So anything where the, the upper body is rotating. Um, so in, in these sorts of planes through here would definitely help. Um, on that one, I'd definitely speak, uh, speak to a physio to try and get specific rotator cuff exercises because the rotator cuff is a fairly large component to the shoulder. And so you could work um, rotator cuff exercises for the front of the shoulder and for the back of the shoulder, and both would have completely different effects. So a little bit of specificity is required and that's where you might get some help from a physio, but you know, any kind of pressing movements overhead, if you can, are, are fantastic for strengthening the rotator cuff. Any ones where your arm is moving out to the side, like a lateral raise can also be very good, but there's also some specific banded ones we'd want to look at. So actually, if you've had surgery before, there might be some specific deficits after that surgery. So we want to make sure that they're, they're kind of tidied up. So that, that would be my answer there. Lovely, thanks. Um, now also, Anne's can you please recommend exercises to build up strength and flexibility in the hip prior to a hip replacement? Yep. So we want to make sure, again, that the, the back of the, the glute muscles is very strong. So hip bridges are fantastic. So uh, glute bridges or hip bridges are, are fantastic for building strength in the backside muscles. Um, with the side of the hip muscles as well, 
you want to focus on maybe lifting, laying on a side and lifting the leg up to the side of the hip muscles, get some good strengthening as well. And an exercise such as a step up on the bottom step of the stairs would also really help to strengthen the, the hip muscles as well. So those are three easy ones that you can do at home. Um, and they'll also help with the flexibility. And we'd recommend really getting strong. The, the surgery will help some of the flexibility as well, but really getting strong in those muscles is the biggest priority prior to going into the surgery because the muscles you're going to lose the quickest. Yeah. So if we can get them strong pre-surgery, they'll get stronger, easier and better after the surgery as well. And that's probably one of the most important points yeah. is if we don't have it before the surgery, it's going to be really hard for us to get it after the surgery. Yeah. Good. So you have to put the work in before as Absolutely. well as after. <laughs> okay. Dan's asking, how long should the high intensity session last? Yeah. So generally we'd say about 20 minutes. So if we're doing high intensity um we're really pushing a high intensity we won't be able to do longer than you know 15 to 20 minutes so yeah. just depends how comfortable you feel pushing high intensity kind of conditioning so usually we would say you know if we're doing uh, 10 to 20 intervals roughly taking a minute per interval that would be perfect but it just depends on how what exercise you're doing and, and how you're doing so something like a rower might be slightly longer whereas as if we're doing a lot of kind of bike work it might be a little bit shorter intensity so generally around about 15 to 20 minutes is more than enough to get the high intensity so it's really time efficient um, and you just obviously push yourself quite hard when you're working in and on the rest is really relaxed yeah. and that should be perfect for most people okay good uh kathy says um what do you know help on this one what causes the hip to give way with pain occasionally on a side step lunge or a simple twist rotation in a very fit and active individual is it a sign of weakness or something more hard to tell I mean, if yeah. there's a specific range of motion that you'll find is always giving way, then that's something to definitely investigate a little bit further um, because that should be happening, especially if you're getting pain first, then giving way. The giving way there would most likely be due to the pain. So we need to find out what the root cause is, is causing the pain. Is there something, um, is there a, patholo a pathology in the hip that we maybe need to MRI or have a look at and assess, especially if it's always the exact same movement. So that's when I definitely get in to see yeah. maybe one of the sports doctors or a physio to have a look at that if it's completely different movements then i think that could be a weakness but if it's the same movement it's always rotation it's always in the same kind of movement pattern then definitely i'll get that looked at just because we'd want to see why that is the case okay good um eric boyle's just saying it's difficult to keep up exercise programs during the lockdown when all exercise classes um that we've been attending are closed any kind of advice there. yeah absolutely there are zoom classes ongoing a lot of places are still doing zoom classes so that's definitely something to to look at because staying accountable is really important during this period so having either a buddy who you do the exercises with who makes sure that you do them at a specific time and, and don't slack off i think is really important so finding a class where you can sign up and you you book in and that just holds you accountable that's definitely one part because it's too easy especially during lockdown it's so easy just to forget yeah. about exercise and after a tiring day, you know, it's very easy. So either having a, a kind of part that you do the exercises with where you meet up on Zoom is a really good idea. Um, but secondly to that, let's have a look at some of the Zoom classes because they're excellent as well. And then it's just a case of trying to make it a habit and make it something that you, you do in your week without even thinking. You already have that time boxed off and go there. Make it as easy as possible. So that's where doing exercise earlier in the day is often better because as you get uh, through the day you'll have more mental fatigue and you'll be more likely to find the excuses so if you can do it early in the day before you start your working day that's generally one of the best kind of bits of advice we can give if you struggle with that motivation try and take away any of the kind of resistance of, of the day um, before we have a million and one things to, to kind of do and, and that's generally a good one but look at the classes on zoom uh, yeah. they're really really good and a lot of people are being very imaginative with the ways that they're going about them now good thanks uh denise um She's that talks about strengthening exercises. She had surgery for cancer, but and she's finished treatment, but she feels very unfit. So I suppose where does yeah. she start? Absolutely. So really, we want to start with the basics. So even just being physically active after cancer is really important. Even during the process, it, there's been massive benefits shown. So we need to be careful. Obviously, sometimes bone mineral density might be lower afterwards and after treatment. So we want to start off very simple very very efficient so some of the exercises that we would have done in the past on on the website would be perfect um i think you know definitely some 
some sort of guidance maybe from a professional would be fantastic as well but just basic exercises looking at some lower body exercises such as squats lunges if you can manage them stepping up on a small stairs if if lunges are a little bit too hard um, some upper body exercises would be fantastic as well like incline push-ups against the wall and it's just like getting the body moving again um, so making sure that we're doing daily walks up until what you feel that you can do as well maybe on a bike as well a resistance bike if you if you have that option available would be fantastic so it's just about getting moving again and starting to build the strength back up as best as we can but the benefits are have been shown to be um, fantastic so i think it's definitely an important one to start okay good uh pat what exercises do i do pre-surgery for a knee replacement absolutely so with this one we want to make sure those quadrants muscles are as strong as possible so um squatting to a height that you can do without pain is is really good making sure that we uh, do an exercise called the straight leg raise because that shouldn't cause your knee any pain at all um, and you can look that one up uh, on online and that's very very easy to do um, so those two are two key ones that are quite comfortable also we'd often use the wall hold um a wall hold exercise you'll have seen that on the tv recently uh, in ireland's fittest family but just adjusting it for yourself for your own kind of uh, where you can do it to without any pain is really important um, if you can use a bike or even one of the um, small bikes that you can get that just go on the floor uh, to keep the knee moving is really important as well so if you can kind of get some strengthening into the leg those would be the the four ones that i would would go for at the moment and you don't need any real equipment apart from maybe the small bike that you can you can buy online or i think we have them at the clinic as well in the shop at the clinic that you can you can get and there those four would be my key four without a gym at the moment okay thank you i uh, just two last questions here i suppose that they're very similar when you did touch on your talk about people's weight and you know one person's asking should they consider bariatric surgery to reduce their bmi and uh, actually two people have asked that about gastric bypass surgery they do need a hip replacement at some stage and they have a very high bmi so i suppose just some advice there maybe yeah absolutely i think you know there's um there's good evidence to support bariatric surgery reducing weight however we need to put the habits in place that are really going to be important post-surgery so we will just want to see a trend in the right direction in the bmi so if our if our bmi is trending in the right direction pre-surgery the evidence would be that it will continue to go that way post-surgery when we've got better function so it's really about putting the right habits in place pre-surgery so making sure our physical activity is higher now there's you know some people may be in pain walking but walking as best or as best as you can also maybe using things like the the arm bikes that you can buy online or in our shops again at the, the clinic um there's lots of places you can get them and we want to try and increase physical activity increase heart rate to burn calories but also they're making sure that our diet is as good as possible as well and really get those good habits in place so that once we have had the surgery we're in good place and we've already formed those habits and we continue them going afterwards because obviously we will have a little bit of a period post-surgery where it's hard to maybe exercise so i think yes that the surgery is is a good option and it has shown to be very effective but i think also we can't rely on that we need to put habits in place you know the strengthening exercise is a very good way of doing exercise as well which will help after surgery as well so i think you know we can't just rely on that we need to make sure that we're putting good habits in place increasing our physical activity making our muscles stronger so they can handle more as well is, is vital um so even just losing the weight isn't the only thing to, to focus on luke thanks very much um for joining us this evening and thank you everybody else for joining us